Hi everybody, my name is Zach, and uh, I'm assuming you're watching this because you are moving to Japan and you want to bring your cat with you. I know there's a lot of other videos out there talking about this subject, but I kind of found uh, that they always were missing something, um, and so I wanted to go through uh, our experience um, bringing our cat from the U.S. to Japan, and I'm going to try to be as detailed as possible. I hope this video doesn't run more than 15 or 20 minutes, but we'll see. Uh, just some introductions. This is Minaju. Minaju we adopted once we got to Japan, and uh, I'm going to talk about that later at the end of the video. Got my computer here, so I'm going to be kind of going between the two. So uh, a couple of points just to start with. Uh, the If you know you're going to be going to Japan and you want to bring your pet with you, the sooner you start this whole process, the less stressful it's going to be on you and your pet. So it's really important that you give yourself enough time. Uh, in our case, um, we started the process approximately a year before we thought we were going to go, and we ended up leaving after nine months. So we were kind of right along with everything, but give yourself more time if you can. If you know it's going to be 18 months, great. You can start doing everything now, and uh, the tests and everything should still be good, but always go through the paperwork. Um, be very careful and be very methodical because you don't want to show up at the airport in Japan and something's wrong. Now, you know, a uh, little, uh, you know, Fluffy has to be in quarantine or something for uh, some time or worst case scenario, uh, well, you know, you maybe you have to go back home and take your pet back home or worst case scenario, uh, they will destroy your pet. So uh, it's really important you really are, um, it, it's, um, it's you, you do take a little bit of a risk bringing your pet to Japan, but if you follow the steps, you should be fine. Um, and then, uh, so I, we'll just get started. There is a document that you can download um, from the Ministry of uh, Agriculture, I think, and it outlines this whole process. So if this sounds familiar, maybe you've already gone over that document. I'm just gonna go through what our experience was. Um, so the first thing, step one, is microchipping your pet, um, and I, with this step there wasn't really a whole lot, you know, just make sure that you're getting a, a correct microchip that will be, um, uh, that's in the guide, uh, I think it needs to be like 15 digits or something like that. Um, and then uh, just also keep in mind that the microchip needs to be done before the first vaccine shot, or you can do them both on the same day. Um, so our uh, cat Moki was born on June 16th. Um, I believe she was microchipped possibly before August 16th, but, but we'll just say August 16th for now. So uh, approximately 60 days after she was born. Um, step number two is rabies vaccine. So these are two shots. The first shot, uh, your pet must be at least 90 days old in order for this first shot to basically count. So um, depending on the age of your pet, in our case with our cat Moki, uh, she was born June 16th, and it was very important that we did get that date correct because if we got it on day 89, they weren't gonna count it. So uh, just make sure the date of birth is actually day zero. So you wanna make sure that you're counting 90 days kind of after the day they're born. If you wanna be really careful, you could just add 92 or 93 days and, and you should be good um, in that case. Uh, again, you can get the microchip on the same day as getting that first uh, rabies shot. Um, I believe we got our first rabies shot like October 7th, I think. We had one doctor's visit before the rabies shot where we talked to our vet about what we wanted to do. Um, and I highly recommend doing that too. Uh, you know, you can do it at the time you get the rabies shot. You can talk and say, hey, you know, we want to bring our pet to Japan. I recommend having a separate doctor's appointment before that, where you go into the vet and say, we want to take our pet to Japan, print out the document, bring it into them. Um, our vet was very good. They knew everything that needed to happen. Um, it sounds like they've done it before. So you'll go in and you'll get that first uh, shot. Um, at that time, uh, you will want to schedule the second shot, um, and I believe it has to be at least 30 days. The second shot must be at least 30 days after the first shot. So again, uh, the timing there is very important because you will be submitting all these documents with the dates. 
Uh, one other important thing is make sure that when you are getting your uh, rabies vaccinations that um, you know get some sort of like certificate of vaccination something like this um, I don't know how official it is but just I we got it make sure it's signed um, making everything as, as official as possible okay um, so you'll schedule that uh, second shot. Um, as I mentioned, we got our first one in October. We got the second one in December. So we were uh, well over the, the uh, 30 days that we needed to wait. Um, and then from there, uh, we would then schedule the antibody shot. So our vet recommended, um, I believe you can get the uh, um, blood draw for the test the same day as the second shot. Our vet recommended we wait uh, about two to three weeks after the second shot so that of course it had time to be in her body and so then we came back. Uh, so step three is getting the rabies antibodies uh, test. Um, we got this in January of 2022. Uh, we moved to Japan in, in July of uh, 2022. So the important things here is um, obviously uh, one thing is the cost. Um, with our vet and everything, it was about $1,000 uh, to have the blood drawn and sent in. Um, so be prepared for the cost. Um, and the other thing now is the timing. So from the day the vet draws blood and has that sent in, that is when your 180 day quarantine period can begin. Now, when they say quarantine period, um, we, we didn't necessarily quarantine our cat. I mean, you know, we still took her outside. She was in our apartment. So I'm, I don't know why it's necessarily called a quarantine period. Um, but uh, that was just um, what, what they seem to call it, a 100-day waiting period or, 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 or a quarantine period. Um, if this is not done correctly, your pet may have to wait out that waiting period in Japan in quarantine. That would be real quarantine. So that may be where that, that um, uh, language is coming from. Um, anyway, as long as they have the 0 0.5, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what the terminology is, uh, as long as the tests come back and they have um, enough of the rabies vaccine in their blood, then that is considered good. Um, I believe in our case, we got our test results at the end of February or, or sometime in March. Um, and it came very official. Everything looked, you know, very, very official. Um, so, and, and it came back with uh, enough of the vaccine in her blood. So that's good. Um, Advanced notification. So advanced notification, this uh, is when you're basically emailing the airport. So we came into Haneda Airport and uh, you're emailing the airport and basically saying, hey, I'm, I'm planning to bring a pet in. Uh, at this time, uh, you will probably also need to have your tickets booked already. Uh, they'll need to know what airline you're coming in on, what flight you're coming in on, um, all of that information. They're also going to ask you to send in, um, I believe at this point it's just some scans of the document. So I believe it would be a scan of obviously the test result um, and then uh, a couple of different forms that they have you fill out and then send in. Uh, so that is, um, then they will usually email you back and say, okay, everything looks good. Um, and again, that needs to be done at least 40 days prior to your arrival date. Um, so uh, very, very important there. Make sure not to miss that step because they, they may make you push back your flight if it's less than 40 days. Um, um, I'll talk a little bit more about the flight and, and what airline we flew. Um, but for now, um, I'll just move to the next step, which is clinical inspection before departure. So this is where I personally had a lot of questions because it didn't exactly make a lot of sense to me how this was going to work. So within uh, 10 days of your uh, arrival um, coming into Japan, you must receive 
um, like uh, your basically your your vet will check your pet, and then they need to send all this information into um, APHIS. I, I forget what that stands for: Animal Plant Health Inspection, something something like that. Uh, and basically, so this is just, a, it's kind of like a government organization that, from my understanding, uh, checks all the documents that your vet sends in, and your vet needs to be registered with them, and basically, I think they're just checking and saying, yes, this vet has registered with us, and we're saying that all this information is correct and good, and all that. So, um, uh, two things about that. So again, one, your vet needs to be uh, in this system. They need to be registered in this system. And that is something that, of course, you'll want to check, you know, this, uh, as I mentioned, this is now kind of July. I checked with them the previous September saying, are you in this system? Can you get this paperwork for us? So obviously don't wait till July to find out if they're in there or not. Um, and again, that's just the communication thing with your vet. So uh, what, I, what normally will happen is within 10 days of your departure, you will go and get a, I guess like a pre-departure checkup. That's just basically the vet saying, checking your pet and making sure that they are able to fly and, and there won't be any problems. Maybe if, maybe they would uh, uh, provide like some sort of sleeping pill or something if you think your pet's gonna have anxiety or something like that. Um, then they would electronically send all of the information into APHIS and then APHIS should send you back basically a, a, a form um, showing that you are good to go, that everything has been checked off, everything is good to go. Um, now in my case, that is not what happened. So on the day that I went into the vet, my vet for some reason was unable to log into the system. So in that case, we had to do everything old school. So they printed everything out and they signed it and all this stuff. And then um, I had to actually uh, send it next day uh, UPS, which was about $120, to make sure it got into APHIS to make things uh, even more complicated. This was over the July 4th weekend, where of course, you know, as a government agency, they're not gonna be working on that weekend or the following Monday. And my flight was the following uh, Saturday, I think. So um, I basically, you, you have to provide a return um, uh, envelope and so that was also next day. So again, that was $120 altogether. Uh, in the end, I was able to get it in time. I think everything came through on the Wednesday. Um, and so uh, that did all work out, but it was very stressful. So hopefully your vet will be able to send everything electronically and you'll be able to get everything back um, uh, very quickly. But yes, that does all have to happen within that 10 day period. This was something that really confused me at the time. I, I thought this 10 day period seems very, very quick. Um, and it is. So, um, cat's playing. Uh, so got that back. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the flight now. So I lived in Seattle and flew Delta airlines from Seattle to Haneda Delta, um, to my knowledge was the only airline that would fly direct Seattle to Haneda that would allow me to take uh, Moki, our cat, in the cabin with me. Um, and uh, I was, uh, I know there's lots of other ways to do it. Um, obviously try not to have your cat go in the storage area um, or, or dog, it's, it's just not a good experience for them. Um, so with Delta, uh, the uh, timeline there was I booked my ticket well in advance, probably a good 60 days in advance. That was also so that I could get in touch with Haneda Airport and let them know that I was coming. Um, and then it was an extra $200 to bring Moki with me. Um, I, uh, I had to book my ticket and then I had to call um, their uh, basically customer service to say, hey, I'd, I'd like to bring my cat with me. Um, and then uh, because there's only a certain number of pets are allowed on a flight and I what I didn't want uh, In addition to all this paperwork going wrong I didn't want to show up at the airport and there was you know four other cats already booked on the flight So I called very early made sure that I had a spot for Moki with me um, and uh, to Delta's credit um, they the they did keep the seat next to me open and I did not have to pay for that seat so upon takeoff and landing of course Moki had to go under the seat in front of me but during the flight I was able to put Moki in the seat next to me and you know check in on her keep my 
keep my hand in there, give her pets, um, and she handled the flight very, very well. Uh, when you arrive at the airport, um, then you need to go through the animal quarantine, which um, in Haneda was just in the baggage area. And uh, uh, they were already expecting me to be there. They already had some paperwork and everything ready to go. Um, I took Moki into a little area, and if I remember right, I did take her out of the, the, um, uh, her, uh, her uh, uh, bag. And I think maybe they weighed her or something like that, but then put it right back in. Um, and then that was it. So they, uh, uh, I believe they did collect some paperwork from me, but then left me with basically what was kind of just a, a, a animal registration showing that Moki was brought into the, to the country. Um, and that, uh, you know, she'd be able, she was allowed to be here. So that was um, our that was our experience. Um, uh, but I did uh, I did do the flight by myself. It was a bit of a complicated situation, but it was just me and Milky at the time. Um, what I would say is that again, it's uh, it it doesn't have to be a hard process as long as you're following the uh, documents and, and the paperwork that's out there. I'll put the link in the description. Um, make sure that this, I'm recording this in January of 2023, so make sure that you're getting the most up-to-date um, materials. But uh, as long as you're on it, and again, giving yourself enough time, then I think uh, it doesn't have to be super complicated. You just have to really be checking and double-checking and, and rechecking. Um, one other thing I would mention, and, and this, everybody's situation is gonna be a little bit different, but if you are, if you are thinking if you haven't adopted a pet yet, uh, and you're going to be coming to Japan in maybe 18 months to a year, I, I might recommend just waiting. And um, there are a, a ton of good um, uh, groups, uh, you know, Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto, where uh, you can adopt uh, pets uh, once you get here. And that just might be a good idea because it's you know the 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 trip for them, the cost is is quite high. Um, and, and the trip for them can be very stressful and very hard on them. And so just depending on your pet, their age, uh, if they have any sort of medical needs, um, it, it might not be the best idea to do it. And if you have the opportunity to wait and you can adopt once you get here. So I, I hope that's a, a detailed um, explanation of our experience and, and what we went through bringing Moki from the U.S. Uh, to um, Japan. Uh, and so if I've left anything out or if anybody has any questions, you can go ahead and leave them in the comments.